morning to all of you. Why do we forget and why do we remember? And I'm starting with the title of forgetting because I've reached the age where I realize I'm forgetting a lot. But I realize also that I'm not the only one. Each day when I go into my chemistry class and I say, have you got your notes? Everyone says, I forgot. Or have you done your homework? And I ask, why not? I forgot. Peter Shirley Matthews is also smiling. So maybe it's the same thing in this college too. Why is it that youngsters too are forgetting so easily? Let us go a little to the brain. So most of us know that we have the central nervous system, which comprises of obviously the brain, the spinal cord, and the retina. And we also have the peripheral nervous system, which helps us interact with the outside environment. But the third nervous system is more important. Anyone can guess what is the third nervous system? What happens when you are supposed to give a talk? We say there's butterflies in the stomach. So, what is the third nervous system? It's called a three letter word, gut, G U T, basically the stomach. But as scientists, we don't like to give a simple word, so we call it the entric nervous system. And here lies the clue to the answer why we forget. All of us have experienced this. It's not that I'm saying something new. But when we are nervous, when we are just thinking of the exams coming, it affects the body. It may affect the stomach, it may affect your back muscles, it may affect your shoulders. Thoughts in the mind are affecting the body. And all the more then, anxiety, nervousness, worry affect the capacity to memorize and the capacity to remember. Secondly, if I were to ask you to look around this room and look at any brown thing that you can remember, quickly, take 15 seconds, look around the room and think of as many brown things as you can remember. Great. Now close your eyes and try to count how many brown things you remember. Close your eyes again. Let's do it again. I'm going to ask you two questions. First question. How many blue things did you remember? Let me see all of you are smiling. Blue things. Without opening your eyes, something of cheating. Okay. Second question. How many brown things did you remember? Okay. Which was more? The blue or the brown? Brown. Okay, obviously, and why brown? Because, exactly, because I asked you to remember brown and you chose to focus on brown things. And this gives us a clue, again, of the brain. If the brain were to process all the data that is coming in from the five senses, like our computers of old, it would crash. And therefore, the brain has a beautiful system to regulate what we are actually going to process. And part of it involves the reticular activating system, the RAS. And the phenomenon is called the phenomenon of attention. So because attention is like a spotlight, we choose what we want to remember, and the rest of it goes into the subconscious. And because of that phenomenon of remembering and choosing what to remember, we realize that it is in our power, it is in our ability to choose what is it that I want to remember and what is it that I want to forget. So, very often, subjects that we like very much, we don't remember. We remember very much. But subjects that we are not so interested, okay? Now, many people, when they teach chemistry, they say, oh, chemistry is such a boring subject. The subjects that we don't remember is because we are not interested. So, Therefore, it is important to create interest in the subject that you have. Now, I'm going to, this third point that I'm going to bring in, thank you. The third point that I'm going to bring in is the question of 
is there enough of the hard drive and is there enough of RAM available? And therefore, that is one of the reasons why the limitations of space that allows us to remember or to forget. If we have unlimited space, all of us know, once our phones uh, cross a certain limit, it becomes sluggish because there's not enough of hard drive or there's not enough of processing speed. So the third reason could be the limitations of both your hard drive or your RAM. And that also causes us to forget. And finally, one of the reasons why we do forget is because we tend to multitask. And research has shown that the brain cannot really multitask. It gives us the appearance of multitasking, but we just go from one thing to the other. So the brain is capable of focusing on one thing at a time, but when we multitask, it's jumping from one thing to the other. It takes in a lot of energy, and therefore we don't remember clearly. When we're talking about multitasking, of course, not all bad. All of us are used to multitasking, and some multitasking can be good. And lots of students ask me, can I listen to music while I'm studying? And my answer is, yes, if that helps you, listen to music. But what type of music? Instrumental music, either Hindustani music or Western classical. But don't listen to music with lyrics. Why? Because the same area in the brain which processes the lyrics is the, is the same area that you are using to study. So instrumental music is processed in another area where your words and your study matter is processed in another. So instrumental music helps us to calm the mind and to work well. Multitasking is also beneficial sometimes when you're doing a physical task and a mental task. So I could be cycling and I could be thinking of something. So there also multitasking helps. And the last thing, multitasking is not all bad because sometimes multitasking produces beautiful music. And that's the example I'm going to give today. On the left hand, we have a bass run going through and on the right hand, I'm playing something totally different. Both the hands are doing something totally different and yet what you get is music. I like to call this piece the Virar Special because I like you to imagine the train leaving from Church Gate to Virar, and you can imagine in the piece when it crosses the Mahi Creek, when it crosses the Thane Creek, etc. The original piece was Wilfred Atwell's Five Finger Boogie. <laughs> Due to anxiety, nervousness, or stress, 
It could be the subject not interesting. It could be the limitations of your hard drive or RAM, or it could be multitasking. So what do we do in order to remember? So the first thing, of course, is repetition. And this is something your KG school teacher would have told you, to repeat and repeat. And what does neuroscience tell us? The more you repeat an action, the neuronal connections keep on getting strengthened. And therefore, the brain is no longer hard, wired as we believe, but the brain is considered to be plastic. And the synaptic plasticity caused by repetition increases the, so to speak, the thickness of your channels there and you help to remember better. So, even though we might have poo food repetition, all of us like to read just once and rush for the exam. But you know, when you read it once, twice, thrice, when you've actually engaged your hand, that's the time it works. The next thing, of course, is emotion. If I ask you to remember, say, maybe 2611, when the terrorists attacked Mumbai, and I ask you, where were you when you heard the news? You will remember that place. And that's because at that time, that emotion was so strong, you were able to remember that. So anything with a very strong emotion causes the memory. The amygdala, which is involved in emotion, okay, causes it to remember. So if you want to remember a certain thing, bring feeling and emotion into what you're studying, what you're doing, whatever it is that you're passionate about. Because when you bring that, you're going to remember that matter a lot. And finally, the act of being positive. The act of being positive, all of us know, releases the feel-good chemicals, whether it be serotonin or dopamine, okay, the hub chemical, the oxytocin. So the more positive we are, the more we are able to remember. When one is peaceful and calm, one is able to remember better. So positivity helps us to remember better. And of course, in all this uh, meditation which we have in our Indian culture for years, meditation acts to help you remember because it acts like a magnifying glass. How many of you have played with a magnifying glass when you were young? What did you do with the magnifying glass? Exactly, we burn paper. So the sun is there, the heat is there, but what do we do? We take the magnifying glass and then we put the paper underneath it. The magnifying glass is the power to concentrate that heat onto the point and generate great energy. Our mind is like that. If you are able to concentrate and focus on the task at hand, we are able to not only remember, but to produce great results. And therefore meditation, the art of learning to calm the mind, is something that helps us to bring about great outcomes and great efficiency. And in that, as I said, positivity helps us, because the more we are positive, the more the body relaxes, the more the mind relaxes, and the more we remember. And in order to be positive, there's only one thing we need to do. We need to be grateful for the many things that are going well in our lives amidst a world where there are many things that are not going right. Be grateful, have hope, have faith, and have love, and you will be able to bring about that change that you see. I'm going to end with this last song which summarizes what I have to say. Is there something in your life that's not going right? Is there something that you would like to change? Is there something in your life that makes no sense? Do you feel like just giving up? Are there times in your life when you've had enough? Are there times the clouds seem all bright? Are there days in your life when the sea is snow? Are there nights when life seems a cross? Oh, pain lives is what keeps on moving on. Oh, pain lives is what life's all about. Oh, My friends, they see us too. Yes, there are times in my life too. Days when I had enough, but who did 
to stand with me, going on, holding a bottle of Oh, baby, the looks is what makes life better. Oh, baby, that's what this life's all about. Thank you.